never get to cup the balls. I cup his or he cups mine? Well, all the dust He's on the Hey, everybody. Welcome to our live YouTube. Here I've got a couple awesome guests Josh Sutton here and Andy Mulder. Um, we're uh, obviously not big YouTube stars like a lot of the folks here at the Hype House, brought to you by Element. Thanks to Element for uh, providing uh, or sponsoring the house for the week. We're really excited about it. Been producing a lot of great content, been a lot of fun here. Um, it, and a huge thanks to Mitchell Gordy here for getting uh, all the lighting set up. The lighting is phenomenal. I love the, the gunmetal blue here on the banner out back. Uh, looking forward to the uh, next hour here on the channel and answering any questions you folks have uh, coming at us. Again, for uh, two really uh, good and experienced hardscapers, and I imagine I might throw myself in there too. So uh, thanks for joining us for the uh, sake of uh, just information. Uh, Josh, what the heck, dude? Tell us uh, about you and what you do, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I own uh, Sutton Outdoor just outside of Kansas City. I've uh, been doing hardscapes for about 20 years now. And I uh, went to Iowa State, got a degree in horticulture, moved down to North Carolina, and uh, started a landscape company down there for five years and met my wife. We ended up moving back to the Midwest and I started Sutton Outdoor up again and uh, worked for a couple large firms that just wasn't happy with being an employee. I knew mm -hmm. I could do better working for myself and I've had a passion for that for years. So we got back in and we've been uh, doing mostly uh, probably 80% hardscape, 20% irrigation landscape for a, we did work for a large home builder in mm -hmm. Kansas City, so that opens the door to a lot of nice custom backyard projects sure. for uh, wealthier clients, so we've just been running with that. My brother and I run the company and then we'll hire four to six guys throughout the year to help us with our workload and right now it's just the two of us this winter time, but we've got, you know, applications coming in for workers to work through yeah. uh, spring, summer, and in the fall, and then they generally they are college kids, so. We're just uh, looking for some more employees right now. So. Yeah, cool. Andy, how about yourself, man? Quick background bio. Yeah, uh, I'm Andy Mulder. I own Mulder Maintenance and Services. Uh, we're based out of Northwest Indiana. Uh, we do higher end hardscape work, and uh, we have, do have a, a mowing or maintenance route that we have uh, one crew that does that. Uh, we've been in business for about seven years now, and um, yeah, we usually run about, like I said, two guys that do lawn maintenance, and then three to Three to four guys, including me, on hardscaping. Um, so, yeah, that's what we do. Cool. I uh, wanted to be sure to get a quick intro in, there, in here for those guys. We've got a bunch of other guests here in the house. And we are at the uh, the Hype House, the Green Industry Hype House, uh, brought to you by Element. Again, thanks to those guys for uh, for being a big part of this and sponsoring the house. And uh, everybody here has got different and varying sponsors to help them uh, make the trip a little more accessible for them. But uh, the, the Hype House, if you haven't been following along, if you don't know anything about what's going on here, it is a, uh, a, an aggregation of talented uh, influencers, as much as we don't like that word so much, uh, as, a, as a nomenclature for who we are and what we do. But we're all uh, you know quality contractors, quality landscape and lawn care professionals that uh, happen to have some, uh, you know, some, some high quality uh, social media channels. So uh, the thinking is get, them, get everybody together in a house for the week, for a few days, whatever they can get in for and collaborate, create content. Uh, we drove around with a, a rented skid steer here today and filled a bucket full of ice and water and Gatorade and all that and drove all over uh, uh, t uh, Tampa here and uh, had a great time just kind of crashing job sites and offering drinks to, to folks that were working and uh, had a ton of fun. We're, we've been doing, I mean, there's been a lot of YouTube vi videos being shot, a lot of podcasts, uh, a whole lot of, lot of stuff going on. So it's been, uh, it's been really a, a great opportunity to get together and I look forward to what the next one is and even what... Uh, other folks may take this concept and, uh, and, and run with in the future. So uh, we're, I'm just beyond pumped to be here. So with that said, um, you guys have social media channels, of course. So why don't you promote what you got going on, Josh? Tell me what, uh, what your uh, social media channels are and also your apparel brand. Oh, too. yes. <laughs> well, we're, we're pretty much focused on Instagram, Sutton Outdoor LLC. We post our daily stories. I'll post some informative content on installation and just our day-to-day -day wins and struggles. It's my life on Instagram, basically, our company. It's uh, really grown over the, I'm just getting into it, really, the last couple of years. I've kind of got out of my shell and promoted it more and more. I try to yeah. post daily on it and uh, grow that, getting ready to uh, kick off the YouTube channel. I think we'll get into that more yeah, okay. after being here. So yeah. Been, uh, you want 
jump in that arena and yeah, get, get beat on a little get, bit too. Yeah, right? might as well. I'm <laughs> roughing myself up a little. So. <laughs> be good for you? Okay. Andy, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much all on Instagram. I have a couple YouTube videos, but I don't do a lot with that yet. Um, but my Instagram is MMSNWI. Um, and that's where I put up most of my stuff. And I'd like to thank Unilock and Permedge for sponsoring me to send to come here and do this. And so, huge thanks to them. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I guess uh, till we get any questions, if we get any questions, because our YouTube channel is small, right? So if we're um, you know rolling through this and nothing's coming in, we're going to talk about some stuff. And I'm going to go live on our uh, my Instagram channel for the balance of our time because Andy's going live on his Instagram channel at nine o'clock at MMSNWI. See. You, get, oh, you literally. Oh, I, I have right. like. Start, you have never said it right. No, ever. and I, I have like been working to get that memorized. <laughs> my I really appreciate wrong. it. I won't Thanks. say it right again on you, purpose ever again. But um, so t- you're talking about hiring guys. So yeah. that's a huge question. I get it all the time. You know, how do I hire good guys? How do I, or you know, good people, whatever. Um, being as you know, our, our businesses are seasonal, and that can be really challenging for a lot of companies. What are you looking for in people? How are you finding people? How are you? How are you letting? people go that aren't good fits and how are you what are you doing to try to a, a, attract and uh, retain people that are that you want to you want to see year to year yeah in the past I would uh, hire fast and fire slow this year we're doing it the reverse we're gonna hire slower hire or fire fast yeah we've uh, developed job descriptions we're uh, putting ads out more than just Craigslist I've had some bad luck hiring off of Craigslist yeah, partially true, right you just get the bottom of the barrel there's a reason they're looking for jobs a lot of times but right sure I uh, created very detailed job descriptions on what we're looking for what tasks are going to be required to do and then we'll lay out the pay scale based on that position so they're not coming in looking for $18 an hour at a, at a basic labor position right. no skill so that's kind of filtering some of them out and then uh, we'll do like a a phone interview and then we'll do a in-person interview and then uh, now my brother and I are getting together to kind of compare notes on what we feel, how they feel they'll fit in with our system. Right, sure. So we're not just taking a warm body and then right, yeah. all of a sudden. Which so many people make the mistake of, right? Just yeah. filling seats, filling positions, you know, somebody yeah. to hold a shovel, whatever, right? Yeah. And that's, that's just generally, I wouldn't say it proves disastrous, but it sure doesn't overall prove overly productive, right? Definitely. And, and that's that's such a struggle. And Andy, what's your philosophy on on the hiring and and firing and, and retaining and all that? Uh, I try and do as much um, as far as hiring goes as looking for referrals from number one from my guys. Um, I was blessed with a couple of really good guys a couple of years ago, and because of them, a couple of them have left, but then they've brought some new people on as things have gone along. And most of the time, if 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 you have an employee that is going to bring somebody on to work with them. They're not going to bring somebody that they don't want to work with. Right. Um, and so I think that's important. Um, but you know, like just your community. I mean, I, I, I usually, if I'm looking for a labor or something, I start at Facebook. I really do. And try and get people to share and try and find somebody that has a connection with me somehow. Um, and that's done okay for me yeah. up until now. I hired a guy, um, this past fall, uh, he's been really good. And he was, I think he was following me on Instagram, and then he ended up being um, uh, long distance family with one of my cousins. And anyways, it just worked out. And and it's not always like that. I mean, I've had to let go. I'm always cycling through the the, the lowest man. I feel like on our yeah. crew, we're just always cycling that position. But I think that's going to come with kind of that right. that entry level position and that pay scale. Um, but now that you know, I found I, I feel like last year we had the best core group of guys we've ever had, and it was the least amount of stress I've ever had through the year. Everything was just I don't know, it was just really smooth, and and it just clicked last year and this year. But the year before that, it was a disaster, and I was I mean, it just all year I was fighting to find two or three laborers. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a couple really good core guys now, but um, it's just uh, you. I don't think you can ever stop looking for people. Yeah. Even if right. you think 100%. you have everyone you need, and I'm guilty of not doing that, but otherwise you get in the in the habit of you're always like in a lurch trying to find somebody. Right. If you're always looking for good people, you know maybe that person comes along and maybe you're not completely ready for them yet. But you don't want to be like in a in in a hurry when you need somebody. And when it's busy, that's when we get we get yeah. um, you know to uh, 
taking a warm body. Yeah, you're just you're just going to take somebody. Whoever's going to answer the phone, fine, yeah. you get the job, and then you struggle with that all year. And yeah. We're all guilty of it, but oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've just been. I'm really thankful for some of the guys I have, and um, I, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at without some of those guys. Sure. You know, but yeah. but then keeping them is, you know, that's all I want to do is keep challenge, them. Right? I don't yeah. whatever I got to do. I want to keep my guys because they're. I can't do what we do without them. I would not be sitting here today without them. I really wouldn't. I, they, they, uh, they do a phenomenal work, and uh, and I learn from them too. So. Hmm. Interesting. I was going to ask you, Josh. So you, every spring, you're looking for a whole crew. Pretty much. Wow. My brother and I are the two stable employees. Wow. And then we're having to start back from scratch. From nothing. Yeah. Jeez. It's been a revolving. Yeah, my Oreos blank. That's what. <laughs> Guys, we've got a question from yeah, uh, sorry, viewers, the uh, Mr. Zach Swigard. Uh oh, uh, Zach Swigard. That sounds Zach like a name. Zach Swigard. Right he is uh, one of y'all to hit on the topic of health insurance. Um, who you use, things like that, with employees. So just just health insurance for the mm -hmm. business. I guess um, trying to add this a little, add this a little bit. But do you sure. provide it for your employees? Yes. Just, how do y'all handle health insurance within your business? Yeah, uh, I guess whoever. That's the, that's, that is the one benefit we do not offer to t at this time, and I don't know that we ever will because the complexity of it and the expense. What I have so, f and, and this, this is probably going to change because the caliber of individuals we keep looking for and higher and higher on those scales and those, those demographics. Um, we're probably going to have to figure something out there, but as of right now, we don't do that. But we, we offer a lot of other you know, paid holidays, paid time off, paid sick days, paid uh what else the heck you know paid vacation all sorts of stuff uh like my my project my two project managers get two paid weeks off and then all sorts of other stuff so um we're working on that we're working on um like the uh the 401k and our you know ira matching and stuff like that so we're working on that i was hoping to have that implemented last year it didn't happen this year hopefully is the year um and it can be pretty simple to set up simple iras and stuff like that so we're trying to to get around that and just be a flexible good employer somebody you would want to work for yourself so we're trying to hit everything around that scary nucleus of, of healthcare um, as we can until I hate to say till we're forced to but man that's such a that's such a, a big that's such a big thing to bite and uh, I'm not looking forward to it but uh, maybe it won't be as bad as what I'm anticipating but that's how we handle it so we don't I don't have any type of health insurance for my guys I looked into it this year actually and um, it's a crazy amount of money yeah. and there's a lot of stipulations around it where you know a certain amount of guys have to want to do it and if you don't have enough of your guys that oh, want to do it then crap, nobody yeah. can get it yeah. there's all kinds of you know nuances and ins and outs to that and um so we don't i, I don't plan on offering it yeah. i mean it's just and if the, you lay the your guys off year is, to year that gets messy oh, like man, that the geez, and the, the cost is just it's you can't even tens of thousands it. of dollars it's, a year yeah it's crazy. just Crazy. So it, you almost would be better, you know, giving them some kind of bonus than they can buy it themselves. Yeah, like a stipend. Are, yeah, yeah, something like that. And those are areas we may look into in the future. But That's right probably now, a good way to go. Right, right now, we don't know. You can also do like the teledoc systems where they can, you pay like 10 bucks a month for employee and they will cover prescriptions like over the internet if you've just got a cold or a sinus mm -hmm. infection, which is a benefit they can, you can just offer, which will get them the basics. A lot of guys aren't going to go to the doctor for physicals or whatever on, on a regular basis, but it's a it's a nice like foot in the door to health insurance just to offer those basic programs to where they can snap a picture of their sore throat and send it to a doc and get the medicine yeah, they need, and right. you can just include that. Yeah, that's in a good. Pay. That's a good that thing I thought about. Yeah, looking into that. Yeah, for sure. Foot in the door. So uh, we're here yeah, learning. Yeah. That's what it's about. Got another question in, maybe I'll hit on this just real quick. Sure. Uh, maybe have one minute or two. Uh, but Sportsman Logan 11 is asking, what's the best source of security for enclosed trailers? Would you put sec security cameras inside? Maybe one or two minutes real quick on this. That's funny, we were talking about that earlier today and uh, I just have reached out to Verizon a few weeks, or I'm sorry, just before we came down here about looking into their telemat uh, telematics, telemetrics or whatever they call it about security systems, GPS tracking, all that stuff. I have a meeting with them next Wednesday when I get home to talk to them about the options and things they provide for security systems like that. Um, Sean Spencer was talking about how, you know, one of the issues with uh, powered and unpowered vehicles is, you know, if it's running off a of battery, all they gotta do is disconnect the power source, of course, to shut down, you know, the feed to whatever GPS or recording structure. <laughs> 
or a hundred year old man just needed to, oh Paul Jameson never mind the uh, it's not like my grandpa used to see but uh, so the uh, what was the other thing and then like GPS tracking on the vehicles so you can track your air filters oil changes how long trucks are idling we also want to want us to partner with them on a fuel card system to where we can actually they will track fuel mileage fuel consumption fuel idling all sorts of neat stuff like that so we'll see what what the offer is I wasn't uh, no I'll, I'll save an editorial there I'll that's for another time but uh, we'll see. We'll see what they have to offer, and we'll go from there. But I believe we're going to shop that out a good bit. So I'm not fully sold on my Verizon situation. So All we'll right. see. Sorry, I didn't mean to hog. No, I, I don't think there's a any other than heavy duty locks and yeah. I mean, there, if like if that. somebody wants to get into an enclosed trailer, I mean. Well, like Battery powered saws all can pretty much do anything now. So. Parking equipment strategically in yeah, a block door. Oh, yeah. we, if we leave trailer on the site, that's always happening. Pallets sure. material, you bet. Yeah. There's usually, nothing that will never keep them out. I usually bring <laughs> mine back every day. I just don't trust them sitting around Kansas City with right. all the thieves out there. Yeah. And I think it's also important to note, like on that, that if you have an enclosed trailer with mowers or <laughs> lionscape equipment or hardscape equipment you need to make sure that's all insured yeah, and every right. single thing in there is insured and go around take pictures or make yourself a video and all that stuff's really important so 100 percent. yeah uh next question is pretty good especially for the industry that you three guys are in it is from hh progressive construction okay Do you guys offer financing on projects when we start with you josh let's go down the line I haven't got into that too much. I know there's some great companies that offer it, low interest rates, and you can get paid up front. Uh, names of them are slipping my mind. I just don't use them. I get deposits down and get paid directly from the client. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have I haven't done anything like that. We do yeah, just a deposit and draw schedule. Uh, and then my buddy Jeremy Swihart, J Squared Outdoor, who's definitely worth a follow. Uh, he, he had messed with one of the financing programs, I think actually through the Unilock Authorized Contractor Program, and he, he tried it out, he did sell more work with it, but there was a lot of back-end hassle on his end and a lot of fees that he wasn't super in love with, last I uh, recall him his report on it, so um, I, I'm not super interested in that. I, I don't, while I don't mind, you know, like Andy's got a, a you know, a debt-free perspective on everything, and, and generally I do too, uh, that is one thing I have a weird, Thing about like I don't I don't care how they source their money I don't want to be the person that sources the I just don't want to push debt on the people to buy a patio it's just not like but then at the same time Craig Woodstock would say you know don't ever put your value of a dollar on a project you know against your clients value like you know that so, so so they would say like no you offer everything your clients up to them to choose and I, I don't just I don't want to be part of offering financing to my clients for things like landscaping but I you know I was just one of those things I have a weird thing of that I would just feel awful if people ever fell on hard times and they're having a trouble paying their stupid landscaping payment because I you know, even just presented them this poison apple, you know? So I have a really odd thing about that. Cause like I said, I don't care if they put the whole freaking thing on their own credit card, but that was like their choice initially. I don't want to be the one to offer it. I, mean, I, don't, I don't really need to say anything. That's literally how I feel about it. I, uh, mm -hmm. I don't offer it and that's strictly because I don't believe in it myself and I don't want to give that, I, I don't ever want to give them something that could cause them. I mean, it's literally upset what you said, but that's, we don't offer it. I mean, I've never have, and I've done, I, I'm always surprised by the projects we've been able to do, uh, and that hasn't been an issue, and that's yeah. just, it is what it I've is. I've had so. friends that offer it, and they'll get bit, like on a pool, they only get paid in certain progressions, and they might have to finance the whole front end of the pool, and they might get a 5% draw, but that doesn't cover the 50% material cost in the pool, wow. and they don't get paid until the pool's in, in the ground mm -hmm. in a certain phase, so that could be a month in or whatever yeah. before yeah. they get their next draw. Yeah, that's a yeah. no-go. No thanks. Yeah, they're gone. This seems like a can of worms. Yeah. All right, we've got one from Mountain Strong Lawn and Lance. Okay, yep, recognize mm -hmm. the name. So you know that. Okay, uh, question is, I get tired of stressing on getting jobs done to make sure I can make payroll. What do you guys suggest on that? Better payment scheduling, and he's tired of stressing over that. So, what do you recommend on uh, on that issue of him stressing over getting jobs done to make sure he can make payroll? Mm, yeah, um, I think the the stem of that or the root of that would be getting your your core your core finances in order and just somehow getting ahead of that. And I can't tell you what you need to do that other than probably I'd say you got to work more. You're probably busting your tail. You're probably freaking killing yourself as it is. So I think you really need to evaluate if that's the constant stressor. You need to figure out 
like you, you know you just start at the bottom like okay I stress over this and then you, you just work your way up the ladder of like that chain of events of like why and so like if, you know it's probably it, it might be you're not charged enough on your projects so like you're, there's not enough gravy or fat or cream whatever you want to call it on top of those those projects um, and I think you just really need to hardcore look at your finances and how you're bidding projects paying you know and, and the money you're making on your projects the revenue per hour you're making your net profit uh, that that is I think uh, more of a systemic issue of you know just your your projects may not be just priced where they need to be and I've been there I've done it I did it for freaking years of that struggle so I, I really get it man and uh, I would really encourage you to really look deep into your finances of how you're bidding jobs and make sure you're making money and I imagine Andy and, and Josh both have input on this uh, but uh, Mitchell what you got another question or an add-on to that or got just a, another question all together gotcha buddy got, right, uh, cool. got another one um, this one I just I had to look it up because I was like, what's this guy talking about? But y'all know all about that. Uh, <laughs> if it's a one percent question, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going there. Enchanted Seasons Lawn Care. All right. Is it important to any of you three that your employees are ICPI certified? Gotcha. Um, um, go ahead. I don't know. I I I haven't. I'm not ICPI certified, and I've never not gotten a job because I wasn't ICPI certified. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of really, really good stuff to learn in that class, and I think it'd be a great place to start for anybody that wants to learn. Um, but I don't think it will make or break your company. Um, but if you're wanting to educate your employees and, and you want to start there, hey Brian, I, can you I, in here a I think that would be totally fine. I, I think, I but none of my guys are, and I'm not. We, my brother and I both took ICPI certified classes back in 2007 when we were we knew the basics, but we wanted to know the industry standard so mm -hmm. we could build on it. And since then, we've modified. We use the open graded base, which they don't really fully support yet. They're still researching it to see their final thoughts. But it's a good starting point if you're going from mowing to hardscaping to just get that basic background knowledge in the day and a half and get know your you've got solid information to build on. It's a great foundation. I would I personally recommend it, but. Like, I don't get anybody that asks me if I'm ICPI certified. I put it on my website, right. and I think it might make them feel warm and fuzzy when they, you know, call us for yeah. an estimate. Yeah. And, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. So. Um, I'll, I'll give two cents on that, and then and we'll swap some guys out here. But uh, I'll tell you, here's here's the way I would look at it is, I, like, I'm NCMA certified, as these guys probably are, and ICPI certified. Uh, but I, I'm not going to push my guys to do it. We have our own training academy, so I think we train our guys decent enough. But what I would be intrigued by is I, if I were looking to hire someone and they had that certification, well, yeah. that would be different, right? So I I'm not going to push my own guys into it as is, but yeah, if somebody had that and they're coming to our company or they're looking to hire with us, like, well, they've done some due diligence. They've done, yeah, you know, like, so like that would be, yeah. so that would be intriguing. So if you're an employee or an entrepreneur in a company you work for and you're, you're kicking butt there, um, you know, that makes you more valuable, I think, to some contractors, uh, at least contractors, I think, that at least have their, their ear to the ground somewhat. Uh, I so I would yeah I would definitely look at them and, and uh, it might bring you a little more money on the hour too and just but then it's the whole package too you can't be an idiot and be ICPI right. certified and it covers for you being an idiot right. you know so it's all part of the package but I but I would say a lot of guys like if you've got your ICPI certification I mean that that's a that's a feather in your cap for sure there so uh, yeah so all this all the lawn care guys are like what the heck are they talking about right like hey, what I is this foreign I language <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we dork out on fellas yeah I know right. <laughs> Uh, this question has been asked a couple of times, so uh, just 60 We got seconds. more than two questions? 60 seconds on this one. Do you guys snow plow and salt? Mm -hmm. I do not in the, in the story. Uh, we do. I have uh, four guys that go out and do accounts when I'm not there. We have uh, like seven commercial accounts we plow and salt. Yeah, in Kansas City, it's hit or miss, so it's not really worth investing the amount of money it takes to do it efficiently, so we're, we just sit that out and enjoy the... Snow I do not love snow plowing or salting. I do not depend on them. I do not ever budget anything on the company based off of it. It's just if it snows, it snows. And you should not run your company based on it, yeah, like depending it's on snow money, because it could come or it could not. And a big props to you, Andy, is, um, on you've been turning your guys loose on their own, which yeah. I think is just like awesome. Been, and so I commend yeah. you for that. That's super Thanks. cool. And, uh, and on that note, uh, I guess Blake and Brian, if you guys could step in, we'll introduce you guys to my, my hardscaping crew here, and that would be awesome. 
and you guys are welcome to sit here still or whatever, or you get the heck out. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What should we do? Whatever. <laughs> but everybody is here. We'll, we'll, we'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, but uh, as you know, we got Blake Alberts in here, BB Lawn Care, uh, big time YouTuber, and uh, runs a good uh, lawn care business. Brian Fullerton uh, with uh, Fullerton or uh, yeah, Fullerton Unfiltered. That's his podcast. Uh, Brian's lawn business, <laughs> his company, whatever. Um, and Brian, I'd love to, to pick your brain on uh, one of the first questions we had is like retain, bringing in people, retaining people, what you look for in people, and what advice you would have to guys in that question of like, I'm having trouble. Re Hi, finding, hiring, and retaining people are worth a dang. So, uh, yeah, I, I somebody set up here uh, Facebook. I love mm -hmm. finding good people through Facebook, um, making a Facebook post, and then outside of that, like trying to incentivize people that follow you to like share your post mm -hmm. or to tag like a niece or a nephew like on your post. We get a lot of people that way. My last guy came from a family member sharing it to like somebody's mom, and then we got his son. You know what I mean? But I was so basically it's a third cousin. It's kind of like a family, but I, it's far removed where I wouldn't, you know, know the guy day to day. Uh, but, you know, it worked out great. Um, and then also, like, if somebody shares that post, you know, like, it's not who you know, it's who do you know who knows somebody. That's right. Right, one of those deals. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I've noticed, uh, you know, running my business now for 15 years, and we just do lawn care landscaping. Well, I, I'm in the room right now, I'm great, so I'll tell you that. Uh, but, so we cut grass and we just, you know, mow lawns and do the deal. Uh, but it's been more tough to find people, good people. For sure. Uh, last four or five years, for sure. So. Um, I think you still got to be creative and, and get out there and be a little bit more offensive than you are the last, you know, my first 10 years in business. Um, I think one of the questions saying like, what are you looking for? I, I am always looking for attitude because I, I can teach people like almost anything. I, I feel I'm a pretty good teacher, uh, but I can't teach attitude. Like that's either something you got or something you don't. And, and if you don't know how to run a trimmer or a mower or lay pavers, we, with a certain amount of hours, I think we can get you up to speed. Um, but you can't teach integrity, you can't teach character, you can't teach attitude. And so that's something that I look for at least. Yeah, sure. Like, okay. what's your philosophy on hiring people and retaining people? And if you were to hire another person, what, what would you do, even if you're not? Like, if you had to, what would what would be your philosophy or how would you find somebody? Yeah. Let me butter real quick. I want to add to that once you're done. Please. You that, it'll, it'll go into this next question. So this yeah, perfect. Is yeah, I think it was said last night. Um, in my network, anybody, you know, I always ask my friends, family, Facebook friends, that's always the first go-to because it typically is like an easier in. Like, there's no like awkward period. They're just kind of like, we already have a relationship there in, in a sort of way. So um, a lot of my employees that I have, you know, I've gotten other employees just because they were friends. Right, yeah. Um, so that's always where I start. Facebook's been huge for me, um, the swap shops. Uh, the neighborhood Facebook pages, things like that, and then just my own network of people. So, can, same suggestion. Can, can I add one um, to, to piggyback on that? Uh, I said this in a podcast once, and, and it's really like, I don't know if it's like a secret sauce, but like <clears throat> when we have an employee kind of graduate from our company, because we're doing lawn care landscaping, so we work guys for the summer, six, seven months, and up until this year, we never kept anybody on full time through the winter. So I would have to hire somebody and the, the expectation is, hey, you're working here for eight months and then you're, you know, going back to school or quitting or whatever. Um, so one thing that I always do is I tell my guys, you got to find your replacement. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, no, but seriously. <laughs> so because and here's why when I'm hiring these 19, 20, 21 year old kids, they already know somebody who wants to make cash, somebody who's probably going to fit the mold of the job, somebody that's an athletic you know, kind of a kid, maybe a baseball kid or, you know, an athlete, something like that. Someone who's ambitious, wants to hustle and, and Blake, like what you said, um, if they hire their buddy in, you know, the kid that works for me, who's hiring his friend and is like, yo, dude, don't mess this up. Like, you're going to make me look like an idiot too. So mm -hmm. there's like, kind of like you, you start about a plus one versus yeah. just taking some random, you know, application off the street. Um, so, so I always joke with my guys after a year or two, I get a lot of college kids working for me. I'm like, hey, don't forget, you got to find your replacement. And they're like, Oh yeah, dude, like my friend Tyler, he'd be great. And, yeah. and, and I have this like network of like a kid that referred me <clears throat> to another classmate who referred me to his baseball um, bro, who uh, referred me to his brother, right? And so I've had like solid employees for like six, seven years going like 
layer deeper through the little log. But cabin. also that helps too. If you ever come in a pinch, you have all those people you could text uh, or call and be like, hey man, you guys know anybody? I'm looking guy. for somebody. Yeah. And, and that's a great uh, point because I'm 34. You know, like my, I, <laughs> I say this funny, but like, I don't want any more friends. You know, like I, my, my life is pretty where I want it to be, like in terms of friendships and peers and I can only make so many more friends, right? Uh, but I don't have 521 year olds to pull talent from. I think you were talking about this in a video or something. You're like, my friends are getting older. Like, there's not yeah. as many kids yeah. available. Like, as you know, you might have buddies when you're 18, 19, 20, but, but the kids you hire, they have 500 friends yeah. that oh, they're, yeah. they're looking for summer cash. That's totally. That's a good point. And one thing I'll jump in on too before you hire that person, if you have a crew of established people that are good folks, and something, this is at Britt's directive, which was really smart. She started having the guy, our guys make the final call if we hire that person or not. So this, the new hire would come I in and work for, phenomenal dude, advice. that worked out awesome for two hires now. One guy, and it was crazy because he, he was great on the crew, but on our end as an HR person, he was horrible because he was, he was showing up late and stuff. And the, the guy's like, but when he shows up, man, he works hard and he, he brought his own tools and it's like, he's awesome. Like we want to keep him like put up with this bull crap a little bit, see if he works it out. He's a young kid. Sure. But I mean, it just like, you, you can't, you can't keep showing up late. We can't have that as a professional yeah, yeah. company. So we had right. to go, which was a real shame because he had a ton of potential and it, it kills me that he, that he couldn't get it together. So, uh, but that, but the guys are making the decision to hire, um, or at least the, 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 the all clear, let's say, and yeah, then they still want us to make the final. Right? And yeah. that has been so much better than me finding some person and then just dumping them on the guys and say, good luck, I hope you work out. Yeah. And we did that forever. And man, this new system is, wow. Well, there you go. Well, funny story, uh, I think it was this summer or last summer, I don't know, it all blurs together, right? Uh, somebody, a uh, young kid, 16 year old kid, he, uh, we were all done mowing for the day, we were at the entrance of a subdivision and uh, we were just hanging out for five minutes and probably just enjoying the air conditioning, right? And uh, this young kid runs up to the side of the trailer in the, in the truck and he knocks on the window and he goes, hey, are you guys hiring? And I said, uh, yeah, we're always, we're always uh, taking applications, we're always hiring, um, uh, shoot me your uh, name and number, you know, on the number on the trailer. So uh, he goes, sure, I go, we're, we're not hiring right now, but you know, next season maybe. And so my employee, Rob, goes, we're hiring? And I go, <laughs> I go, we're always hiring, bro. And, uh, <laughs> Everyone's replaceable. It was this really weird like paradigm, you know, cause he was like, oh, like I thought like, I'm your guy and, I'm, and you are my guy, but bro, if you move on, like right. I'm super loyal, but I super gotta make sure that I'm covering my butt. Right. Um, but it's always one of those things too, where I'm gonna replace myself, and I gotta replace Rob's gotta replace his replacement, and that's how we keep you know promoting for the ranks. But the point is that there might be some 16, 15 year old kid that in four or five years he might come to work for your company, and although it might not work out right now, keep in touch. You know, keep in touch sure. with his parents. Keep in touch the the 17, 18, 19 year old kids that you wave through. You know, when you're going through the subdivisions and throw a football with at break, those kids might want to work for you for summer cash mm -hmm. two years from now. Approach them, be nice, be cool in the subdivisions. Uh, that could be some good labor pool, you know, down the road. Yeah, that's almost like an email list you should keep as a whole nother thing of like just pumping out like almost your own little newsletter of like, hey, you know, here's where we're at, you know, if you're ever thinking of, you know, yeah. you know just you, if you need employment for whatever, if you know somebody like, and you could almost yeah. market you know, that yeah. way. And, uh, I, I saw somebody, uh, they always included that on a newsletter to their customers. Always right, hiring yeah. team members. Have a son or daughter like that's looking for work, come come work for us. Yeah, that's, all, that's good. So that's that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, awesome. Uh, let's get a question in there too. Uh, spend it, let's do a real quick couple couple minutes on each one. Okay, okay. don't go uh, long winded then, okay. Yeah. We'll try. Yeah. <laughs> cut, cut out the long winded stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Burks, Mowing, and Lawn Care. Uh, have you ever, have your guys have you guys ever been worried about letting someone run your equipment, employees, or family on a job site? If so, how do you get over that fear, or is it just a memory thing? Andy, but why don't you worried. go, because you just turned your crew loose on snow, and I'm super proud of you for it, so, so talk about it, man. Uh, I don't, I, Brian on, on Rob, so. no, I, I don't, you have to realize it's just stuff. I mean, it's, it's insured, it's gonna get scratched, and people are gonna make mistakes. And you have to just be okay with it. I mean, you can't, you cannot be the only one that runs that piece of equipment every single time. And I, in the last three years, I've invested, like my mini excavator has very advanced things on it that cost a lot of money. And I was very scared to let somebody run it and bang into trees and just whatever. And I, sometimes I come back and there's a new scratch on it and it's like, well, it's, what it, 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 I got to use it and I can't be there all the time or else this company is going to grow. I make way more money building the business and selling jobs than I do sitting on that piece of equipment all the time. So it's just, 
it's just stuff and you got to have it to run your business and you got to just let go because it's not your business will stay in the same spot if you're baby everything all the time and your guys are scared to use it because they don't want to hurt it and it's it's just stuff man like it can all be replaced and you know, it is what it is. Cool. Brian, know. quick answer. Or you're you're doing uh, a great job at it. I mean, I, honestly, I if you're asking that question, I don't know if it's like I I can totally relate. I was definitely afraid of like it, not so much empowering guys. You know what I mean? But um, like Andy just said, like is it gonna get scratched, dinged, dented, um, or or more like the worst case scenario stuff would kind of keep me up thinking like. Is somebody gonna get T-boned? Is, yeah. is, is somebody gonna get injured? And sure, um, that's huge. I, I remember talking to Corey Ballard about that because he's got 200 employees out working at Perfect Cut. <laughs> and imagine what he deals with. Yeah, 200. He, he said you gotta look at the, the the reality is that you might get a phone call one day that somebody is no longer with us. Yeah. He said, can you handle that? And uh, so sometimes it's like the financial, like ah, oh, they're gonna scratch up the truck and it's gonna cost me 1,500 bucks. Sometimes it's the I don't know if it's like uh, the psychological or whatever you want to call that or quantify that, but it, it, are you willing to make those next steps? And, and somebody said earlier, uh, like hire slow and fire fast. Um, before you even hire an employee, you know, like can you fire that person? You know, like don't hire somebody if you can't fire them. Hmm. You know, you're, then you're gonna have even bigger problems. Um, and, but I'll tell you what, like we just sent my guy Rob out, you know, for uh, the other day for his maiden voyage plowing snow, and I have to just believe that he's gonna do a good job. We've trained him. We've educated him. I've given him contingencies on, you know, ten different systems and ten different things that he can come up against. He's got other people's phone call, uh, phone numbers that are local. I have to just believe that he's empowered to to figure it out. And by the way, you know, we also like sometimes. My opinion here is we have this expectation that we put these guys out there and they should just do a hundred percent. And the reality is like you got to go back to like when you were your first one, two, three years doing what you're telling your new people to do. Did you scratch them over up? Did you back into an air conditioner and hope nobody saw that it got shimmied a little bit? Did, did you ever like, you know, bang something on your trailer or scratch something? I bet the answer is yes. So give your guys a little bit of grace, a little bit of latitude. You know, like Andy said, things are insured, things can get replaced. Are they headaches? Are they stupid problems? <laughs> yes. Uh, but give your guys the opportunity to grow and and correct them. Don't don't you know chastise them. Yeah, totally. Like I, I think back when I used to work for another landscaper for 13 years, and I was the only job I had ever had, and I messed up a lot of stuff. I totaled a dump truck once. I mean, <laughs> they just know that. oh yeah. I mean, it was it just crazy stuff happens. Yeah, and sure. I think back to how he reacted to that, and he was never one to get upset about something. He was very calm. And I, at the time, sometimes I like, couldn't believe that he wasn't more mad at me. Hmm. But at the end of the day, what I learned from that is I think about that now when stuff gets messed up. It's like, okay, just remain calm. <clears throat> and that made it, it easier for you to be honest with him too, I bet. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, he, he, wasn't, he never was screaming at me like, I can't believe he did this. And if he would have fired me for some, some of that stuff, like I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Hmm. You know, and this is a passion of mine that I'll do the rest of my life. And if he would have just kicked me out of the industry, I don't know where I would have been. I, but I'm not saying like people don't make mistakes that are maybe they need something like that. But I think that put yourself in their shoes sometimes because it's not always easy, and they're under a lot of stress too. So what one thing I heard uh, somebody <laughs> say was, uh, um, "Hey man, this is good stuff to talk about." <laughs> well, I, I, I'm getting a lot of uh, uh, parenting advice because we're expecting, my wife's expecting, and somebody said, um, woo, woo. "Yeah." Thanks, Paul. <laughs> my traveling right now. At least I got one. You know what I mean? But um, somebody, somebody oh, said, thumb fingers. If, we needed that if, you're a, if you're a parent and, and your kids mess up, you want your kids to call you, uh, not hide from you. That's right. And that was like a really good nugget I heard. Say that one more time. It, it, uh, you hope to establish a, a relationship with your kids that when they mess up bad, bad mess up, that they call you, not hide from you. That's or, cool. That's and so I, cool. I said, wow. So if your guys mess up, do they, do they hide from you? Or do they know that you're not a hothead, you're not mm. gonna fire them or blow up, you know, but they can trust in you and say, hey, I messed up, honestly, dude, I messed up. And, but you say, no, dude, it's, it's all good. Like, that's a stupid mistake, it, it is what it is, but let's figure it out. Let's figure out how to not have it happen again. Yeah. Let's move forward from it. And, and there's just a little bit of maturity there, you know, but it, yeah. and it, it takes time to get there, but. Yeah. Hey, uh, Sean and Paul, I'd like to rotate you guys in here because time Back is out. flying Go by. Ahead. There you go. Well, all right, everybody leaves. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Get me out of here! So, 
uh, what, uh, so this is Paul Jamison, Sean Spencer, Spencer Lawn Care. Paul Jamison, Cut That Grass, Make That Cash, a book he wrote, which actually, you know, a guy asking about some financial stuff, I'll tell you, that book would probably do you some good. You should check out the Cut That Grass, Make That Cash by Paul Jamison, the Green Inch podcast. Um, you want to give a quick bio since you're in here, which actually I didn't do with Brian, with Brian and uh, Blake, but quick bio, Paul. Yeah, um, let me take my coat off. Oh, Mitch, it's serious. Since Mr. Gordy showed up, the sure. AC seemed to drop by about 10. I know, right? <laughs> I host a podcast. It's actually daily, Monday through Friday, and uh, we talk about how to take our businesses to the next level. It's called the Green Industry Podcast, and so we chat with hardscape folks, lawn care, landscapers, just how to take our business to the next level. Heck yeah, dude. Sean, what's up with you, man? Oh, man. <laughs> just doing our thing, you know, social media. We're down here with all you guys at the Hype House, just having a really good time, and uh, yeah, Sean's one half of Spencer Lawn Care, my other, my better half sitting over there, TQ, Trimmer Queen, Savannah. She uh, she keeps the ball rolling, and she's over there monitoring everybody's comments, making sure everybody's being good. <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it clean. Absolutely. Good if you guys are in here, though, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, give it a share. That's and, uh, why these guys are so good at YouTube, and I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, it really helps the algorithm. They, thank you, yes, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and Mitchell, I want to get you in here too, man. So, uh, any, any other questions or anything going on? Yeah, What's uh, a popular topic nowadays, and this, this is for everybody in this whole entire house, but uh, uh, you guys hit on this, take about a few minutes, whatever. How would the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour affect your business? <laughs> As my friend Jordan says. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <right, right>, yeah. <laughs> um, for, for us, and, and at least in our company, we actually don't pay anybody anywhere near. We're well over that, so it doesn't affect me at all. Now, I know the other ramifications that we'll have for other businesses, but uh, do you guys have input on that either way or thoughts? or One second, my daughter's opinions. calling. Sorry. Oh, that's, yeah. That's very handled. important. That's number one. Answered. Yeah, get out of here. Me too. That's number one. <laughs> Um, thoughts on that, Paul? You got any, any input, any thoughts? I, I, yeah, I, I have some, but I don't want to say them. Yeah, I was going to say, I, don't, I, think, I think as an employer, you need to be as far away from the, the minimum wage as you possibly can. And even if everybody's at 15, that just changes. The, the 15 will then become the new $12.17 or whatever the heck it is now. So you'll have, to, you'll have to just evolve past that as a company. Your pricing will have to shift. Um, it's, it's just, it's the same as, as it is now. It'll just be the same in, in five years when all, when everything just adjusts around it. It's all, that's all it is. Yeah. And we all talk all the time about raising our prices, but you can see the inflation, the minimum wage, everything's rising. Right. We have to be rising our prices on, on the top end. Yeah. And that'll just float all that up higher. That's really what it comes down to. You, you got to remember though, you know, even if we raise the minimum wage at 15 bucks an hour, what's going to happen is. Now, the goods that are being produced, those labor workers now that may have been a little bit lower tier are now at $15 an hour. So in return, they have to charge more for that product now. So whenever that goes up in price also, are we really saving much there? Now, I personally agree it needs to go up some to $15 an hour. I think that's a big leap from, you know, in Ohio, we're like $8.50. Uh, Is it really? Wow. Yeah, it's like $8.50. Some states are still in the sevens, and then there's federal regulations and all that good stuff that are, have it even lower. And then you, you know, you have your visas and all that that can actually put some of those guys into like the five dollar range. So I yeah. mean, it's, yeah, it, it's it's a mess. Uh, definitely think there needs to be some help there, though. Hmm. Cool. How to hardscape? Said Mike, Mike Bless. Mike that, is Mike. Mike. That, that is a good looking group of guys. Oh wow! Well, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, Michael Keenan wants to know, uh, Spencer, will you get a truck bed salter? A truck bed salter. Stick around, man. We uh, we got things in the work, works. I'll tell you what, there's a heck of a storm heading towards Ohio right now. I was just on the phone with one of my guys, and this one looks like it could be a doozy, but sometimes they hike these things up, and then they're all show and no go. But I'm, I'm hoping that's the instance, because I'll tell you what, when we get back this weekend, it looks like we're going straight into possibly a three-dayer, you know? I mean, it's going to be... It's going to be nuts. Uh, we've been gone now, what, five days, and I think they've already had three snow events. I was hoping for two, possibly one. Uh, so they're right on cue, and it's just going to keep on rolling the way it looks. So hmm. we'll see. But, yes, stick around. Next year, for sure, I'm, I'm done with the TGS 1100 bulk sp you know, yeah, bag spreader. It's, it's did its toll on my shoulders. Yeah, you're definitely there. Yeah, two, three skids a night, you know, in a storm, whatever. It's just, it's becoming a bit much. It's time. Absolutely. A couple things I got to mention real quick because Brittany is texting me, my uh, my wife, who owns the companies you may or may not know. Is she saying, look, like and subscribe is what? You know, I, saw, I am no good at YouTube, but uh, Brittany says, like and subscribe. 
Uh, she wanted to mention LMM, which we, we already talked about that. And I got a checklist here from the boss. So look out. And then also wanted me to mention Waco, which why she's not here doing that, I don't know. But it's a, an event we're hosting in, uh, in uh, Waco, Texas, June 12th. It's called Together in the Trades, a summit for couples in business. And uh, it's, it's aimed at the working couple. And uh, the goal is to not get divorced because of your company and because of, your, because of working together. So we've got uh, some great speakers coming in for that. Uh, people, everything from like marriage counselor type speakers to uh, folks like the Spencers here that work together and Britt and I and Brian and Liz. And uh, it's gonna be an, an incredibly value packed day. Of course, we're there uh, in Waco next to Magnolia. Um, so that's a great draw too. And guys, buy the tickets because you're gonna be a freaking hero, not a zero. Uh, if you get if you get your girl over to Magnolia, I promise you. So uh, yeah, so check that out when you get a chance together in the trades. What's going on tomorrow at three p.m.? We got to get Mitchell yeah. Gordy in here too, yeah. Uh, Mike Plus oh, wants to know yeah, what is the course. one thing. This is a question we've asked on pretty much every uh, YouTube uh, live stream, but it's still good for new viewers on this one. Uh, what is the one thing that you guys have taken away from the hype house? Business advice that you were going to implement mm -hmm. in your business back home. Um, something Brian said earlier in the week is just stuck in my head this whole time, and it's building your team around you. And I've, mm. I've, I'd like to think we've, I've been good about that, but the more I'm seeing things that are coming up short, I realize I don't have enough of a team around me. Um, and so that's been like the big thing that stuck with me on week of I am going to be hiring more people to help me get more things done and to grow everything from social media to our company, close more projects, design projects better. I have I have some big aspirations, big plans here moving forward out of this week. So, yeah, I don't, yeah, you hit it. You hit the nail on the head, man. This week's just been a a week of just full round knowledge. I can't really hit on one thing in in general, but just overall the community coming together from different genres. You know, we have hardscape guys here. We have uh, landscape, lawn care guys, snow removal guys here. A podcaster and, solely a yeah, podcaster and gals well, he doesn't long here, and gals. Uh, let me make that clear. Uh, yeah, yeah. I always get knocked. Uh, before I step out, though, yes, like, comment, and subscribe, but also make sure that little bell is turned on so that every time <laughs> Almond's Landscape goes live, it'll ding that phone or wherever you're at, and it'll let you know that Almond Landscape's live. So Thank I'm going to step on out. Appreciate that, Sean. Thank you, sir. What the, what's the takeaway? Well, actually, quick quick bio on you, and thank you for moderating. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank I really you. appreciate that. Uh, a quick bio for you, and or hell, take you know what? You earned it. You earned it. Take the rest of the time. I don't care. Um, quick or a bio for you, and then also a takeaway for like what the 48 hours you've been here so far. Like you got a takeaway so far, and, and all yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, Mitchell Gordy out of High Point, North Carolina. I own and operate Mitchell's Lawn Care LLC. Been in business. This is our 11th. So you say outreach type employees. This is my 11th season. Um, and I was just I'm honored to be here. Uh, I was invited to come down. Uh, I got here a little late, but uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. There's so much knowledge and, and just a wealth of knowledge in this house. It's insane, like uh, Sean hinted at. So many guys from different aspects and different industries that make up our community. Uh, I've got to know uh, several new guys, you included. Um, mm, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm foreign and, and alien to the hardscape world. Um, but catching up with you, Andy and Josh has been real cool just to see the, you know, the, the artisans that y'all are in your industry. So it's really cool to, to see that too. Um, and getting to know people, you know, like Brian and, uh, and Paul better and spending, you know, more, you know, more time with them. So sure. it's been a lot of fun. I think each and every one of us are going to take something from this. Oh. Um, you know. I just I came to have a good time and I'm here for the t-shirt. You know? so, uh, um, well, it's a nice soft t-shirt. So yeah. you at least one there for sure. So you. it's it's a cool it's a cool thing. So cool. I love our community, man. Yeah, it's amazing, really. It really is. It is, and I, we, were, we were talking about that earlier in the week, and like we wish we could disclose where we were at because we know a lot of awesome opportunities would be opened up to us as far as like, well, my brother has a shop down here, you know, all this crazy stuff. And but I've used I've used the community to to help me, and I, I I do my darndest to help the community as well. But like I just reach out, and I'm like, hey, I've got a project going in Wheeling, West Virginia. I need somebody. I need a contract hauler and somebody that, that can source aggregates for me. And like, bam, 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 DMs blow up, and it's like, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you folks do for for me, and I'm I'm doing my best to pay that back. So uh, um, thanks thanks everybody. Truly, go ahead. we got a question for Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell, do you ever plan on growing a bigger company, maybe based on the lessons you learned in the last few years? Ooh, that's a good not, question. Not anytime soon. <laughs> no, um, 
you know, I used to keep it a secret what I do full time, but I mean, you know, the rabbits out of the hat uh, a long time ago. But I'm a full time uh, state trooper for the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Uh, this is my 15th year with them, and that's my prime gig. Uh, I cut back from doing full time lawn care, it was just running me ragged. And uh, last year I went back to a part time aspect, and it was the best decision I ever made. Hmm. Um, this year I'm cutting back even more to where I'm literally only doing it one day a week by myself to where I don't have to rely on anybody but me, myself, and my equipment. So the number one priority is zero stress. Mm -hmm. um, and I would only entertain the idea of going back to a full-time you know, business, a, a bigger business, once I'm done with the patrol. Um, until then, it's just gonna be what you see right here. Yeah. Uh, who's gonna go live next, Caleb? Uh, Andy Mulder is going to be live on his uh, Instagram channel at MMSNWI. Uh, Andy's a phenomenal contractor, one of the best. Like I said, Andy, you're not going to get that forever. I'm just doing it for professionalism's sake. Uh, it's it's wow. generally Andy at MMMWSNWI. Or something. So, uh, but there check him out. One of the premier hardscapers in the Midwest, absolutely. I am so glad he's not in my market so I don't have to compete against him. Uh, and but he'll be live next year, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, good question we got here for Mitchell. Uh, have you used the new zero trigger yet? I have not. Maybe but, boy, uh, people are excited about that thing. That's all I see. Hey, I want your stuff. Like, how about the zero? <laughs> this is how excited I am about this thing, and, and it sucks that I'm so excited about it, and the grass is not growing. Right. Since I bought it three different times, I've got it out of my trailer, uh, cranked <laughs> it up. I've driven down this like neighborhood street, like just around my yard, like just to just to be on them. And it's like you know, like a kid at a candy store. So I'm excited to use it. And I and I've had a bunch of people ask because it is a it's a new mower. You know, it's just one of the hot things out. Um, you know, the guys are like, yeah, I want to see content on it. You know, I, I want to see content. Yeah, right, on it, right. Know, but uh, I have nothing to mow right now, so uh, that stuff will be coming to my channel. Cool. Um, hey, Paul, can you jump in there for a quick second? Um, I want this question for you. Uh, is it harder to be, for it's not Mitchell though, but is it hard to be a state trooper and do lawn care? Can you talk about your podcast interview with Mitchell, because it was one of your most popular episodes last year? Yeah. Maybe well, Mitch, you can you know, banter with him. Yeah, we are actually um, hanging out today at the um, beach. We're going to talk about it again. Yeah, we're going to go into it, but something that both Mitchell and I have found is sometimes we think we need to grow, 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 and then you get stretched thin. So when you have a full-time job, you need to find that balance where you still have, I know you have Hannah in your life. I'm trying to get a wife in my life. We don't want to just work ourselves to death. We want to actually have the margin uh, in our life. And so I know personally in, in talking with you, sometimes you have to trim back and find you know that schedule that makes it manageable so you can really enjoy life. There's so many people in this industry, and I also hit on this when I was on Fullerton Unfiltered with him uh, and uh, the two episodes with you, that there's so many people in the green industry, the lawn care community, not so much hardscaping just because of the, the schedule and the, the length of time these jobs take, but in the, in the lawn care industry that guys that own these businesses are first responders or you know they do other things you know they work at other companies so there is a huge percentage of business owners in our community that lawn care is not the only thing they do mm -hmm. you know and I didn't realize how large a piece of that pie there was until I let the rabbit out of the hat and let them know that hey I do other stuff you know um, and then you know the direct messages on Instagram start blowing up like hey I do this I do that I do this and I'm a business how do you handle this da, 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 da. I mean it exploded, you know, and that's why I like talking about it with y'all on your podcast because there's so many other, you know, men and women out there that do other things. Mm -hmm. So it's neat to be able to relate to those people. Um, good, good answer. Um, uh, this goes to Caleb. Somebody said, when did uh, you transition from lawn care to uh, landscaping? Do you have any tips or advice? Uh, somebody, uh, Tommy at After 10 wanted to know that one. Yeah, we got to, I was falling out of love with lawn care because and it wasn't, I actually, I, I could consider getting back into lawn care if I, then we may come to that, we'll see, but I would have a manager and I would, have, I would never touch it, but I would have it, you know, just under our, under our umbrella of services. Um, I started getting out of it because I just, I just wasn't in love with it. I was trying to, trying to push, you know, and build the hardscape and landscaping into things. And what ultimately was happening was my, my lawn care clients were not giving the, le the level of service that they deserve. And like, I was wrecking my, my reputation collectively just with lawn care. And so I'd have clients mad that we were behind on schedule with lawn spraying. I'd have clients who were upset with me because, you know, Grand Grandma Crabtree was upset that we left some, <laughs> some grass on the, on the sidewalk and I had to turn a crew around. That's Go back and deal with that and that, that kind of tree. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
<laughs> and and it's a generalism, but you know. And so I started fall, falling out in love with it because I made it a mess, and I was I wasn't able or willing even to give it the time to, to write the ship. And so one of, one of my biggest regrets of the lawn care business was um, you know letting it devolve like that, frankly, but also not making it a buildable, sellable company. Uh, my routes weren't very dense, which in cut that grass, make that cash. He talks about that all the time, and is very 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 precise about why why you should do that and how you should do that. Um, and and um, where was I at? And I, I just didn't turn it loose to my, I didn't delegate the responsibilities to the guy that ran it. And I should have had a, his own cell phone that clients called him, dealt with the issues, and he just dealt with it. And I paid him a little more, and he dealt with all that stuff. So um, with that said, but my, one of my biggest regrets is not making it a billable, sellable company that I could have sold for ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, whatever it was worth, that would have helped me propel, like sell that thing, take that chunk of money and use it to lurch or propel my, my hardscape company further with better tools that would have propelled my hardscaping company that much ahead. Uh, one uh, last one that I think we'll do here and then we're going to transition to Andy. I'll say, yeah, we gotta get to Andy here. Yeah. Um, somebody said, I've given up my lawn care this year after five years to focus solely on hardscaping. It's tough, but exciting. Any, uh, I'm asking for him, maybe any words of advice for a guy going first year full-time hardscaping? Yeah, hang in there. It's tough. Uh, sometimes you gotta write. Wait, end the show. Solid advice, solid advice. Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, I think you're, and, and this is, just, it just gets rougher. You're, <laughs> what I meant was my response. Oh. What I meant was my response. <laughs> I'm about to lose my voice. I'm about to lose Andy's my voice. coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you, man, you gotta grind it out for like year three, man. You get to year three and you're golden. I, I really say year three to five is like that golden window, especially in the hardscape or like a total, I would say a pivot. Yeah, it's a pivot, let's call it a pivot. Um, so you really just got to hang in there, make sure you're advertising properly, doing a phenomenal job, educating yourself the best you can, do the, the best project you can, follow people like Andy Mulder, Jeremy Swire, maybe myself, the Hardscape Academy, all these kind of things, and uh, just keep grinding out, but make yourself the best professional you can possibly be, brand yourself out, clean your trucks up, have clean, tidy job sites, yard signs, brand, uh, any money you spend on advertising, I'm really a big believer in, in yard signs and Facebook marketing, They're, it is very targeted to the demographic you want to work in. And just just hang in there, man, and just just save up as much money. Have cash on hand so you don't freak out when when things are tight. Um, maybe plug these guys out of that and we're out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, Paul Jamison, Green Industry Podcast. Highly recommend smashing the green space with his podcast. Out of control, successful. Cut that grass. Make that cash. Thank you, Mitchell Gordy. Uh, Mitchell Gordy, Mitchell's Lawn Care. Uh, where do you want people to go? Uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the same. At Mitchell's Lawn Care LLC. Pretty easy. Bam, right there. Folks, thank you so much for going live or coming live with us. I really appreciate your time and, uh, and checking in. Uh, again, right over to Andy Mulder's channel on Instagram, at MMSNWI. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again. Take appreciate care. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I tried to do that cool thing you did. Doing. That was a disaster.